Hello, it's Scott Manley here. A few days ago, I posted this video to my Twitter. It's a simulation showing, well, a black hole consuming the Earth. Now, this is a very small black hole initially, a fraction of a millimeter across. This is something the size of a piece of dust, and yet, initially, it would have the mass of a fairly large asteroid. Now, this is a simulation using smooth particle hydrodynamics, uh, using a piece of software called SpaceSim, which is free, and it's not really that accurate, but it is pretty cool. So the camera, to be clear, is tracking the black hole because that's the one stable object. The Earth isn't actually shifting back and forth like this. That is the black hole falling through the Earth to the other side and then falling back because black holes are so dense. The difference in densities between a black hole and solid rock is roughly equivalent to that of a cannonball and the tenuous atmosphere in low Earth orbit. There is nothing to stop this. Well, except for its voracious appetite. You know, the way that it doesn't so much push the rock out the way as invite it to come home and meet Mrs. Singularity. As it does so, conservation momentum does mean that it is increasing its own mass and is slowing itself down. And of course, let's not overlook the elephant in the singularity, and that is everything ends up inside the black hole and so the Earth kind of gets destroyed. Or... Does it? You see, the ideas of black holes threatening planets is a pretty common trope in science fiction, but the best example I can find of a tiny black hole consuming a planet is the modern, you know, 2009 Star Trek movie, which is okay, but I'm glad it's sort of shifted off in its own Kelvin-verse. During that movie, a uh, bad guy basically destroys a planet, and I'm not telling you which for spoiler reasons, using a black hole. Okay, technically they use something called red matter, which means they need to drill into the core of a planet, but uh, yeah, whatever. Another perhaps more real-world version would be uh, people who thought that the Large Hadron Collider might actually produce black holes. They might discover new physics that would mean that in a particle accelerator the energies were great enough to cause a black hole to collapse. And while that wasn't possible with the universe that we understood, if there were very compact high dimensions, it would actually be possible to create a tiny black hole. And then that might fall into the Earth and slowly eat the planet from the inside. So black holes, as you probably know, are bodies which have a sufficiently strong gravitational fields that light cannot escape them, hence they being black. And they form when you get enough mass in a small enough space that there is no known physical process that can resist the gravitational field. Like the Earth and the Sun won't become a black hole because of the pressure from the electron clouds around the atoms pushing out against the gravitational field. In neutron stars, the atoms are crushed down into their nuclear material only, and that can hold it up. In slightly bigger stars, you might get quarks that are holding up the pressure. But for bigger objects, we just don't have a solution, and neither do those people that tell you that black holes can't exist. The smallest black holes known are a few solar masses, and typically we know about those because they are close to a star, which is dumping material onto them, and uh, as that material falls in, it gets hot and it starts emitting x-rays in this you know, crazy black hole tornado kind of thing. The largest known black holes are at the cores of galaxies, and some of them are tens of billions of solar masses. So the size of a black hole is defined by the event horizon, the Schwarzschild radius, and you calculate the Schwarzschild radius basically by multiplying the mass of the black hole in solar masses by three kilometers. I mean, okay, that's a rough derivation, but yeah, the sun, if you collapse it down into a sphere three kilometers in radius, six kilometers across, it would be a black hole. The Earth, if you shrunk it down to like nine millimeter radius, it's something like ridiculously small, then it too would become a black hole. The moon's Schwarzschild radius is like le like a tenth of a millimetre. So now imagine if Thanos snapped an asteroid mass black hole into existence and shot it at the Earth. What would happen is it would basically pass through the Earth and as it passed its gravitational forces would disrupt the material around it, injecting a lot of energy into the planet for sure, but it would ultimately come out the other side with roughly the same velocity as it entered because it is so ridiculously dense. While it is grabbing onto as much of the Earth as it can with its really strong gravitational field and its mass is growing, it's not grabbing onto enough to slow down because it's so tiny. The cross section uh, it only allows a small amount of the Earth to be absorbed in its brief passage. 
Now again, this sounds like we're getting into the realm of science fiction, but there is a real scientific question here. You see, while we don't know how to produce black holes with the mass of asteroids in the current universe, it's possible they were created during the early stages of the Big Bang. And having a bunch of primordial black holes out there would actually help with the whole uh, what is dark matter explanation. Now we've managed to figure out that most of the mass ranges of black holes can't possibly explain what we see, but there's still a couple of small windows, and some of those things might be floating around through space. So what would happen if they hit the Earth? Well, we'd know they would pass straight through and make a big hole. To casual inspection, they might appear like another impact crater, except there would be a paired crater at some opposite side of the Earth with a trail leading through it. But the Earth's interior is too mobile, so there may not be any evidence of a deep diving, uh, you know, path. But on the Moon, things are more stable, and it might be easier to see the characteristic trace of a black hole passing through the lunar crust. And so back to the supervillain scenario. What would happen if they managed to put the black hole inside the planet with a low enough velocity that it never escaped? For a black hole with a mass of one of the larger asteroids, that would be about 10 to the 20 kilograms, it would be consuming matter at a rate of about, you know, 10 billion tons per second. And that means that it needs more than 100 days to consume its own mass of material if it was inside the planet Earth. So at that rate, it would take decades to consume the entire Earth. But the destruction of the surface wouldn't be a slow process by any means, because as that material is falling in, it's getting compressed, it's getting accelerated, it's heating up, and it's releasing energy. Dropping matter into a black hole is one of the most efficient ways of converting matter into energy that we know of. So consuming 10 billion tons of matter per second some of that is going to come out of en as energy. Now, the sun, it converts approximately 4 million tons of matter into energy per second. So even if you've got a fraction of a percent of the energy coming out, you're basically heating the interior by a huge amount. Now, part of this energy, by the way, goes into stopping the infalling matter. This is something called the Eddington limit, where really luminous stars can't exist because they produce so much energy, they blow themselves apart. But all that energy, it has to get out, and it's not going to be pretty for people on the surface. In fact, you're probably going to end up with jets of high-energy radiation eventually shooting through out of the planet. And there's another factor that stops a mini black hole from consuming the entire planet, and that is that there is a limit on how much angular momentum a black hole can contain. And the Earth, with its rotation once every 24 hours, actually has more angular momentum than could be contained inside a black hole that could be made from the mass of the Earth. And so that means you end up with a spinning black hole which stops matter from accreting when it's rotating in roughly the same direction. So you end up with a disk of material that contains the angular momentum of the Earth. Some parts of Earth will, in fact, survive. And at the middle of it, you will have a tiny black hole with a significant fraction of the mass of the Earth. And by the whole way, the whole thing will be emitting in the X-rays because it's got so hot. In fact, for this particular animation, I had to put on, you know, the welding goggles because it was so damn bright and you wouldn't be able to see these particles moving in the in the disk. So that Star Trek black hole shouldn't have left empty space or just even a tiny compact thing. It should have left a disk of material with the angular momentum of the planet. And it should have taken longer and it should have shot out jets of energy. But of course, none of that matters because it's a movie. They need to make it happen fast. So it disappeared quickly. Besides, it's Star Trek. They can just wave their hands and say the neutron flow polarity... No, wait, that's Doctor Who. Anyway, coming back to the Large Hadron Collider and the people that claimed that they were endangering the Earth by turning this thing on without knowing that it wouldn't destroy the Earth. Actually, they did study whether this thing could destroy the Earth. Scientists at CERN actually did the math and they, they figured out uh, all the implications of these things existing. So if black holes were produced that were off the scale of the energies involved in the Large Hadron Collider, they would be so small they wouldn't consume the Earth on timescales that were less than the expected lifetime of the Earth. That is, the Sun would collapse into a white dwarf long before the Earth collapsed into a black hole as a result of the Large Hadron Collider. But also one of their conclusions was that if these were actually stable, then natural cosmic rays hitting white dwarfs would produce black holes, which would then 
actually counteract the natural cooling of white dwarfs in a way that would be detectable by existing telescopes, and this wasn't seen. So they could be pretty sure they could turn on the LHC without creating black holes, or at least if they did create black holes, that they would instantly evaporate via Hawking radiation. So anyway, all this started with me messing around with space sim, and I'm not going to argue that any of these black hole simulations of you know consuming a planet are actually realistic, but the papers I referenced are actually pretty good resources for figuring out how a black hole might consume a planet. And if that's too much for you, yes, you can always download Space Sim and Smash Planets together. That's a lot of fun too. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.